and its sister papers sold them to a Nova Scotia company. The Telegram's new owner is Saltwire. That company owns the Halifax Chronicle Herald, where employees have been on strike for over a year. The bottom line is that uh, this is not the first time that we've been sold and you know we have always uh, dealt with new owners uh, you know as uh, well as we can. So we're going to take this uh, you know in the, in the same way we're you know we're going to talk to the new people and see uh, you know how we're going to be dealt with. Uh, you know we we are aware of the situation in uh, Nova Scotia and you know that is a uh, concern to us. But uh, the bottom line is that, uh, you know, uh, our newsroom has been uh, gutted uh, so many times in the past four or five years that we're nothing but skin and bones anyway. So, uh, you know, the bottom line is we've been told by the company that uh, hopefully it's going to be kind of status quo. Uh, but, uh, you know, we'll uh, deal with uh, whatever situation comes up, uh, you know, when we're sat down face to face. And Transcontinental has quite a footprint in this province. There are 13 daily or weekly newspapers, and the papers are located in small and large communities right across Newfoundland and Labrador. Along with the papers, Transcontinental has also sold its printing plants in St. John's and Cornerbrook. Parents of students at École des Grands Vins met this week to discuss the possibility of turning a vacant St. John's school into a second French school for grades 7 to 12. École des Grands Vins is the only French school in St. John's and is overcrowded. The province's education department is considering Holy Cross Junior High on Ricketts Road as the new French high school. Many parents support the idea, but others are concerned about separating the older and younger students. They worry that could affect the cohesiveness of the French community. Parent Leslie James says she'd like to explore all options. We're being presented with one option that seems like it's too late to have any other option and that we're going forward with a second school for junior high and high school and that's it, that's all, but there are not a lot of details. So it's this or nothing. We're in a tough situation where the school is too small. Um, there are not enough resources. Well, the head of the English school district has quit. Darren Pike is leaving the post for a new job with the teachers union. And this comes as the two sides are in the middle of contract talks. Here and now's Megan McCabe has more. Darren Pike steered the English school district through a lot in almost four years, but now he's going to see its future from the other side, taking a job with the NLTA. And that's not sitting well with the Minister of Education. We are in the statutory bargaining period at the moment with the NLTA, so it does, uh, you know, whether it is a real or a perceived conflict of interest, it is uh, very concerning to government uh, that this would occur. Dale Kirby says it's unorthodox, as Pike has access to information the NLTA does not. But he trusts the move doesn't put Pike in a legal conflict. The board says there are no actual conflicts. I have to say, if anyone know, has had experience dealing with this individual, they, they understand how professional and how, uh, how dedicated the individual is to do, not only doing, a, doing his job, but doing a, a very good job. As CEO, Pike isn't at the bargaining table, but he has run the department and its hundreds of millions of dollars of taxpayers' money. NLTA President Jim Din says Pike's new job is overseeing group insurance and benefits. Din wouldn't say how much of a win the hire is for the union. It's certainly very pleased in terms of uh, the wealth of uh, experience and knowledge and approach to uh, uh, things that uh, Mr. Pike brings. April 25th is Pike's last day with the district. Then he starts with the NLTA. He wasn't available for comment. In the meantime, the school board is working on an interim CEO as they search for a permanent replacement. Megan McKay. That was our Megan McCabe reporting there this evening. Well, the federal government has tabled its much-anticipated pot legalization bill. Cabinet ministers discussed some of the details, including who won't be getting access at a news conference in Ottawa. Health Minister Jane Philpott says while pot use can be therapeutic, it still poses health risks, especially for young people. The proposed legislation introduces severe penalties for those who sell or give cannabis to youth. It also restricts the advertising and promotion of cannabis so as not to appeal to youth. 
The proposed legislation seeks to make recreational marijuana use legal by July 2018. Usage would be restricted to people 18 years and older with Ottawa regulating production. Adults will be permitted 30 grams of dried cannabis or its equivalent and four plants. The provinces will oversee and approve retail sales and control enforcement. As hockey fans celebrate the start of the NHL playoffs, people in St. John's are about to say goodbye to the Ice Caps. The team is battling for a playoff spot in its final regular season games this weekend. But what happens to hockey in this city when the Ice Caps leave town for good? For that, uh, we go live to here and now's Zach Gowdy. So, Zach, how is the story of the Ice Caps likely to end? Well, Carolyn, hopefully it will end with one last playoff run if the Ice Caps should win either of their two games this weekend or if the Utica Comets should lose a game, then the Caps will be in the playoffs. But after that, the team is moving to Laval, Quebec, and the AHL in St. John's may never return. Now, this morning I spoke with Glenn Stanford, the team's chief operating officer. He was right there when the St. John's Maple Leafs packed up and left town. Now he's watching as another AHL club prepares to do the same. But Stanford says he is not giving up on hockey in St. John's. Yeah, and it might be the end of professional hockey here in St. John's. When you come to the end of anything, it's a, it's a little somber, but you know, the, the nice thing, I guess, if there is a nice thing, it, it was, it's was it been a long goodbye. We, we, we knew since last July that this was going to be uh, our last year, and like in some ways, it's like when you put your house up for sale, you know, eventually you're going to sell it. You know, we were well aware when we brought Montreal in that we had, we had them for two years, maybe three, if the building in Laval wasn't ready. Uh, unfortunately for us, the building in Laval was ready. So we were basically buying time for two years to see what the other opportunities were out there. Uh, we talked to the Ottawa Senators, we talked to a number of NHL teams, but the trend right now in the, uh, in the American Hockey League and is to go next to your National Hockey League partners. And uh, unfortunately, the geography of where we are is against us in that particular one. So, uh, you know, we move on from that and uh, we've been aggressively trying to pursue other opportunities and we've been at that for, uh, for the last six or seven months. And so we're hopeful that uh, at some point in the future we will have, we'll have hockey back here again. If, if it's not the AHL, then it's the Quebec Major Junior and we still believe that, uh, you know, depending on the product that we bring in here, uh, this is a good hockey market. Um, that, uh, and even though it potentially didn't work in the past, I wasn't around when the Fog Devils were here, the past doesn't equal the future. If hockey wasn't successful here over the last 20 years, then probably you say, you know something, you are swimming against the tide. But we're not swimming it against the tide because we've had wonderful fans here over the last uh, 20 years. We had wonderful corporate partners, wonderful sweet holders, and they continue to come back. So, so it's a winning formula, so why change it? Put down the books and pick up that guitar. After the break, you'll hear about some students who use today's class time to a rockin' and rollin'.
Welcome back to Here and Now. Well, a small high school in central Newfoundland has pulled off a full day music festival. They call the event School Stock. Of course, that's a play on the famous Woodstock concert. And they brought in acts from across the region to their community of Hare Bay. Here and Now's Chris Ensing had a backstage pass. Here's his report. It's loud, like very loud, but that's what live music is all about. Dozens of bands, posters, so many posters for School Stock 2017. Meet hype man, MC, and educator Rodney Vokey. He said getting this full day music event together was hard work for a dedicated group. My students, who are only six students uh, in my music class, by the way, here at Jane Collins Academy, we we uh, we only. We only have uh, uh, less than 80 kids in our high school, grade 10, 11, and 12. And we're putting off an event uh, that Dennis Parker, who was the former director of Music NL, said that probably this is the biggest uh, in the province, like it, of its kind. This is school stock number 12. With a six-year break in between, students like Austin Hunt are happy it's back. It's just good that there's actually a school system that embraces music for once, instead of like everywhere else where like music is a side thing that shouldn't be taken up a day of school. For many artists, this is the biggest crowd they've played. Not this guy. Ian Chipman of the Fables, Navigators and Shani Ganook took to the stage to thank real musicians. I'm really excited to come out and see all you guys because I knew there was going to be people that like music. Students spent the day jamming out and hitting workshops, including a songwriting session led by Adam Baxter. Cassidy Johnson thinks this school stock has been a sweeping success. I think that music is really important. Some people think it's therapeutic. Some people think like it helps them a lot. So I think having a day specifically for music is so important. Part of the appeal was the range of music. A little bit of CCR. Some emotional acoustic. I can change mind, turn it all around. And to cap it off, Metallica. With School Stock 2017 a success, there's hope next year's could be island wide. Chris Hensing, CBC News, Hair Bay. And time now for a look at your weather forecast. Uh, we are going to, of course, talk about uh, the NHL playoffs are underway. The Leafs are in. We're going to mention that in just a moment. But I do want to get your weather forecast. And, of course, a long weekend coming up. And not a bad good Friday and a pretty good start to the long weekend, really, as we take a look at some of those current temperatures right now, 9 to 10 degrees. This evening across the metro region, it's a beautiful evening out there. Uh, we are looking at temperatures near 5 in Gander, 7 Badger, 3 in Cornerbrook, and even above the freezing mark or flirting with it in uh, Labrador City. Bit of snow on the go, St. Anthony, Happy Valley, Goose Bay. As we take a look at those winds, you can see where the winds are in from the south, uh, warming us up across the island. Northeasterly winds for uh, the Straits and into the Cartwright region, Happy Valley, Goose Bay. That's where we've been seeing the snow today. Satellite radar picture uh, shows this nicely as well with the system that's been rolling through. The uh, southerly flow ahead of the system warming us up and the, uh, the snow on the go for the northern peninsula and southeastern parts of Labrador for today. As we roll through tonight, watch your future tracker. Note that snow will taper to flurries through the overnight in southeast parts of Labrador. There's a chance of a shower or light drizzle sprinkling here across uh, Newfoundland for tonight. Uh, keep that in mind if you're headed out, but generally it's pretty quiet. By the time we get to tomorrow morning, we're near plus one in St. John's. Just below the freezing mark across the rest of the province, across the rest of the island, that is. Minus 8 to as cold as minus 16 across inland parts of Labrador. Now, as we roll through tomorrow, it's a generally cloudy day across the island. Note that the winds will shift from uh, a southwesterly direction to northwest into the afternoon here across eastern parts of Newfoundland with northerly winds across uh, the western parts of the island. A few more sun breaks uh, for the west coast as well as we take a look at your conditions for tomorrow. Uh, you can see where, yeah, around 4 degrees for Cornerbrook with a bit of sun but a chance of an isolated flurry. Best chance of flurries will be for Central, uh, plus 5 for the Buren and for the uh, St. John's and the Metro region. And as we uh, take a look into Labrador, we're looking at minus 1 Happy Valley Goose Bay and minus 3 in through Labrador City. So, uh, before we get to, uh, I want to show this picture right off the top before we get into this Leafs chat, uh, which is of me 20 years ago. This was uh, the 
Christmas of 96 and uh, you know there's been a lot of hurt since then the Leafs have only made the playoffs 12 times uh, in fact have missed the playoffs 12 times have only made it eight times since that picture was taken and they've missed the playoffs 10 of the last 11 seasons a lot of hurt and I'm bringing in fellow Leafs fan <laughs> Uh, John Rich, to uh, well, you've been experiencing more hurt than I have uh, a little bit longer. Uh, why don't you give us a brief history uh, for those at home that are wondering why it's such a big deal that they're in the playoffs this year? Uh, give us a brief history of since '67, the last time we won the cup. Fifty years ago. Fifty years ago is last time we won the cup. You know, went through the '70s with Harold Ballard, and that was a tough time. Just had to get butts in the seats. Got to the '80s, that was desperate, but we got the draft and we got Wendell Clark. And things really changed then for the Leafs, and we really started going. And in the early 90s, those are my earliest memories of the Leafs. When I was around 10 years old was when we made the 93 run. So we did have some good years, but it kind of tapered off again. And then there was the Sundin years. The Sundin years, yeah. We had McGillney, Leach. It was a really good time. Conference finals, a lot of fun. But then and the dumpster fire started. The, the dumpster fire. Yeah, I mean, uh, really, it, the last decade has been desperate, desperate, desperate. Dark days. We've had a couple of seasons where it looked like it was going to go okay, and then literally, as the team described, transport trucks off the literally cliff. Literally off the cliff, yeah. Uh, and then, of course, we made it that one season to the playoffs, and then there was the epic Game 7 collapse. The Leafs had a 4-1 lead in the third period, John. Uh, my therapist told me not to talk about 2 thirds and <laughs> It hurts too much, so... Uh, I'm just going to pretend that's off. That didn't happen. It's out of the cannon. But now it's different. And it should, uh, by all accounts, I mean, this is a, a great young team that we should be excited yeah, about. Yeah. Austin Matthews, Nylander, Marner, Zaitsev, Connor Brown just goes deep. Frederick Anderson. It's not, uh, I mean, it's, I'm not looking forward to this round, but I think the future looks bright. Yeah, I mean, it's a bonus that they're here at all. And uh, I think, yeah, as you said, the Shanna plan is in place, and they've got a great young team. Anyway, thanks for uh, for talking to us. And, uh, go Leafs go. Go Leafs go. Yeah, I've still got that Pot Van jersey, by the way. I'll throw that on. We've got a special guest coming up later on in the show. You're not going to want to miss that, uh, so stick around. Well, the heavy pack ice hanging around the coastline is causing some real problems for fishermen. We'll explain after the break.
Welcome back to Here and Now. Well, sea ice that was packed into many bays and harbors last week is thinning out now, but what's lingering offshore is still causing some trouble for fishermen and raising the hopes of the tourism industry. Here and Now's Mark Quinn reports. All the sea ice and icebergs that blew in look spectacular from shore, and from the air, it's absolutely stunning. But for these crab fishermen, it's a spectacular mess. They have a choice, wait until conditions improve or risk tens of thousands of dollars worth of gear. Like if that ice gets, gets a hole in your, your gear, I mean, it could, end up, it could end up pretty much anywhere. This crew on the Blackhead Banker just returned from crab fishing. They lost one balloon and cut their trip short due to ice conditions. It wasn't worth risking $40,000 worth of gear for a few crab. We only hauled uh, 50 pots there that were, that, that, that were fit hauling there in the, in, away from the ice and we, we had over a thousand pounds so we get a full day fishing here. I can, I'll anticipate we'll come in with eight or nine, ten thousand pound a trip. These fishermen say they'll wait until conditions improve but some boats like this ferry to Bell Island couldn't do that. In some cases like this, the Canadian Coast Guard is cutting a path through the ice. Very unusual conditions. And unfortunately, the people who monitor sea ice say it's not over yet. What we do know is that this ice is not going anywhere within the next few days. It's going to stick around for a while. But it's not all bad. Icebergs are very good for the tourism industry. This one near Fairyland has been delighting photographers for more than a week now. This one's even closer to St. John's, about 15 minutes away near Middle Cove. It's a rare treat to get these big, beautiful visitors from the north this early in the season, this close to St. John's. But the tour operators who start their seasons in about two weeks hope they'll keep coming. For Here and Now, I'm Mark Quinn on Middle Cove Beach. Tomorrow marks the 100th anniversary of the Battle of Manchi Le Pru. It was a battle that saw a handful of Newfoundland soldiers successfully fight off hundreds of Germans and save a French village. Tomorrow night, you'll get a chance to see that full story on CBC television. The documentary is called Sons of Terra Nova, and it's on at 7 p.m. Island Time.
All right, we are live here at the Bigs here in St. John's. The Stanley Cup playoffs are back and the Leafs are in. We're going to talk about that and uh, set that up a little bit more in just a minute. But first, your all-important long weekend weather forecast. And why don't we start with current temperatures across Atlantic Canada. And you can see where there's some mild spring-like temperatures to be had. Uh, we've got uh, six degrees in St. John's, uh, double digits in Halifax, and, and uh, where yeah, temperatures are a little bit milder there, but everybody kind of into that spring feel. As we take a look at your forecast moving forward, uh, we can see the satellite and radar picture with this low that is kind of the, the big player on the board over the next 24 hours or so. It is going to depart to the northeast as the future tracker shows. That snow that's been on the go for the southeast parts of Labrador, the northern peninsula, will taper to flurries overnight tonight and into your Friday. Friday is a generally cloudy day across the island. A couple of flurries possible for central towards the west coast. It's uh, clouds more dominant than not, but some sun breaks in the mix for St. John's. Temperatures near plus five, two on the plus side in central, minus one to minus three across most of Labrador. A little bit milder in the straits. Now, as we roll into your Saturday time period, watch the future tracker. You can see where the clouds continue to dominate across the island. There's gonna be some scattered flurry chances uh, in the mix. As we uh, take a look at your forecast for Saturday, note the temperatures that are gonna be a little bit cooler here in the east. Two on the plus side, thanks to that onshore flow. Inland parts of Central should get to plus five, uh, minus two to minus four across Labrador. Now, as we roll into Sunday, uh, you can see where that the flurry chance is still hanging on for central parts of Newfoundland for the early morning, and then it's a pretty nice day. In fact, I think Sunday's the pick of the weekend for central and eastern parts of Newfoundland. We'll see that system coming in from the west. That will arrive for later Sunday uh, with a late day chance of some showers. Could even see some wet flurries mixing in over the northern peninsula and definitely flurry chances on the go for Sunday in Labrador. Note those temps on the island, seven, eight degrees, the pick of the weekend for sure for Newfoundland. And a look, quick look to Monday where we are gonna see that system move in with showers and drizzle for central and eastern Newfoundland. Western Newfoundland will see a mix back to some late day snow and southeastern parts of Labrador and Happy Valley Goose Bay will see some snow on Sunday, uh, Monday as well. Your seven day trend, note the temperatures that will uh, start to taper off towards mid next week. Overall, though, not a bad looking forecast for this weekend. Uh, and as we roll into Labrador, uh, again, you folks not looking at a bad weekend with those, uh, that snow chance moving in for Sunday and into Monday. So we are here at the Bigs in St. John's. Of course, the NHL playoffs are underway. Five Canadian teams in the playoffs, which is a big change because none were in the playoffs last year. Of course, I'm excited about the Leafs because they're back in for the first time and it's uh, it's been a long time. It's been a long decade. I was going to talk to a Habs fan, but none would show up. N not surprising. Hey, 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 I could... hey, hey. Hey, 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 look who it hey. is, Mr. Crow. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, good congratulations on your team making the playoffs for the first time in what is it, 20 years? Yeah, it's been yeah. a while. It's I been a while. I saw the picture on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. How old were you? Six? Uh, I was. Uh, I was 12. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's been a long, old, hard run yeah. since then. Yeah. But uh, first of all, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> You're, you've got the prof thing going this on is here. A, this is a playoff beard. Oh, is it? It's a playoff yeah. beard. Habs fans can start growing their playoff beard in uh, February because it's a given, right? Right, Apart right. Apart from last year. <laughs> uh, on that note, what do you think their chances are this year? I I don't think they're great. I mean, I, I think that they rely a lot on Carey Price. Yeah. And I yeah, I think if they if they beat the Rangers, you know, it'll be it'll be a tall order. Yeah. Because Lundqvist played very well last night, yeah, right? Did. And the, the Habs tend to ride Carey Price, and I don't know if they've got... It's offense, yeah, really, that is yeah, your biggest... It's, it's offense, and it's injuries, right? Yeah. And uh, I, I know as a Leafs fan, you must be a little bit concerned about uh, Freddie, the goalie. Yeah, that's right. right? Yeah, he, but he is back for tonight. Yeah. Uh, but our defense is, is banged up, and our defense is not great to begin yeah, with. Yeah. So as, if you look at the five Canadian teams then, which one do you think has the, the best chance of making a, a run? Is it is it the Edmonton and McDavid? Yeah, I don't know about that. They're really, really inexperienced. That's true. I, I kind of, you know, I really like, as, as much as I hate to say it, I really like the Leafs. No, I do, because 
because they, to me, they're the most exciting young team in hockey. I'm envious. I wish that you know the Habs had Mitch Marner and uh, and Mr. Matthews. Yeah. But I really, really like the Leafs, and I think they have the potential to maybe upset the Caps because the Caps have a history of not doing particularly well in the playoffs and being ripe for an upset. But as you say, it's it's, it's a ridiculously long playoff and the teams that stay healthy are the teams that win. Yeah. Right? No question about yeah. it. And, I, and, you know, Marner, Matthews. If they upset the Caps, they will literally burn that city yeah. to the ground. Yeah. Toronto will just melt down. Yeah. It'll be, uh, anyway, anyway we got to wrap it up. Thank it's you very so much. It's so great to see Cheers, you. Cheers, Coop and Roddy <laughs> and all my students at College of the North Atlantic. Study up hard. Love Your exam's on beer. Monday. Love the prof beer. It's <laughs> nice. <laughs> Oh, Ryan, he looks so relaxed. <laughs> oh, it is time to introduce you to nine-year-old Lucas King from Mount Pearl. Lucas plays the center position with the Mount Pearl Blades Novice Division. He's an avid hockey fan, and his favorite team is the Montreal Canadiens. We hope you're having a fun season, Lucas. You are our young athlete of the day. After the break, the province's education minister has his say about the surprise change of jobs for the head of the English school district. Welcome back to Here and Now. Well, as we reported earlier, Darren Pike is leaving the Eastern School District to join the NLTA at a time when contract negotiations between the teachers' union and government are ongoing. Pike is not part of the negotiating team. He finishes up with Eastern School District April 25th. Here's more of what Education Minister Dale Kirby had to say today. We wish him the best of course he's been doing important work for us but it does uh, it is very concerning for government um, the CEO is responsible for well over a hundred million dollars of uh, you know working with the Board of Trustees to administer and disperse well over a hundred million dollars worth of public spending to the school system um, for uh, all the English language schools in the province 
and uh, we are in the statutory bargaining period at the moment with the NLTA, so it does, uh, you know, whether it is a real or a perceived conflict of interest, it is uh, very concerning to government uh, that this would occur uh, and that, you know, there would be uh, a period of, of time during which uh, the CEO uh, was carrying out uh, the work of the uh, school district, uh, you know, in accordance with the responsibility delegated uh, to the board by the Schools Act, uh, and during that period of time, however long, uh, engaging in uh, negotiations around employment with the uh, teachers union. There is a contract. Uh, that was uh, signed uh, uh, subsequent to uh, Mr. Pike's uh, appointment, um, and there is a conflict uh, clause in there. My understanding is that uh, Mr. Pike doesn't believe that he has uh, violated the conflict clauses, clauses in his uh, agreement, and that the uh, Board of Trustees has sought legal counsel from, uh, from their uh, you know, the, the legal counsel that they have, uh, you know, retained for other issues, and that legal counsel has indicated that they're in agreement that there is no uh, violation of those terms. Uh, but there is indisputably a perceived conflict of interest in the least. In other news now, the Canadian Food Inspection Agency has widened a flower recall over fears of E. coli contamination. The countrywide recall for Robin Hood flour now extends to products sold by Brody, Creative Baker and Golden Temple. Recall products should be thrown out or returned to the store. At least 26 people have been affected by the outbreak. Two lawsuits have been filed in Alberta by people who say they got sick after consuming Robin Hood flour. For more information on the products being recalled, head to cbc.ca slash health. Fort McMurray is using controlled burns to fight fire with fire. Memories of last year's devastating wildfires are still fresh, so this spring crews aren't taking any chances. Wood Buffalo Emergency Services crews are lighting fires in potential hot spots that could ignite if left untouched. North American Indigenous Games open in Toronto this summer, and today the game's mascot was unveiled. This is Debway the Turtle. It was unveiled at the Aboriginal Education Centre in Toronto. The city will host the 2017 Games from July 16th to the 23rd. More than 5,000 participants aged 13 to 19 are expected.
Well, it's time now to see who is celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week. Before we have a look, though, we'd like to point out that there's no here and now tomorrow, Good Friday, or on Easter Monday. We'll be back here with you on Tuesday night. Now, on to those who are making milestones or marking milestones. Wishing Elizabeth Downey a happy 91st birthday. She's from Bayvert, now lives in Grand Falls, Windsor. Here's a triple digit birthday for you. Happy 101st birthday to Les Loader, who's originally from Summerside and now lives in Irish Town. Happy 62nd wedding anniversary to Gerald and Edna Hodder of Main Point. Congratulations to Alice and Cecil Jacobs of Little Hearts Ease who celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary last Sunday. Happy 90th birthday to the Christmas card lady. This is Teresa Power of St. Joseph's. Anniversary wishes going out to Lloyd and Audrey Thomas of St. Paul's River in Quebec. They'll celebrate their 54th anniversary on Sunday. Happy 50th anniversary to Blanche and Harry Harris of Fortune. Happy 60th wedding anniversary to Freeman and Leona Rideout of Seal Cove, Fortune Bay. Congratulations to Victor and Ethel Stone. They're celebrating 67 years of marriage. Happy 50th anniversary on April 14th to Lindy and Lillian Kings. Best wishes to Marie Wellen of Ladle Cove, who celebrated her 90th birthday on Tuesday. Happy 54th anniversary to Hubert and Violet Sampson of Peterview. A big happy birthday going out to Josie McKay of Springdale. She turned 101 April 11th. Happy 65th wedding anniversary to Joseph and Shirley Normore from Horwood. Birthday wishes going out to Lily Wilcott of La Tabitere, now living in Long Point. She celebrated her 94th yesterday. Happy 50th anniversary tomorrow to Gordon and Sylvia Adams of Old Perlican, now living in St. John's. Anniversary greetings going out to Joseph and Ruby Fifield from Valleyfield, Bonavista Bay, celebrating their 50th on April 15th. Happy 90th birthday today to George Keefe of Twillingate. Happy anniversary to Jack and Ivy Marsh of Lower Lance Cove, Random Island. They celebrated their 59th wedding anniversary yesterday. Congratulations to Jim and Rita Hillier of Glenwood. They're celebrating their 51st wedding anniversary, April 16th. Happy 50th anniversary to Neil and Marg Collette of Portland Creek, who will celebrate their 50th Sunday. Happy 94th birthday to Ruby Quillam of Grand Falls, Windsor. Happy 50th anniversary to Hiram and June Goodyear of St. John's. Happy 97th birthday to Asenath Rose, who's originally from Salmon Cove. Happy 93rd birthday to Alpheus Tucker, better known as Uncle Alfie of Anglee, now in Roddickton. Happy birthday to Effie Bridger, who turns 93 on Sunday. Effie is originally from Hans Harbor and now lives in St. John's. Happy 92nd birthday to Catherine Kilfoy of Little Bay, now living in St. Lawrence. Happy 60th anniversary, John and Jean Parsons of Upper Island Cove. Congratulations to Harold and Clarice a Tucker from St. Jones within Trinity Bay. They're celebrating 62 years of marriage. Congratulations to Arthur and Hilda George of Port Union, who are celebrating their 57th anniversary. Well, it seems no animal hospital can hold this Houdini. There he is. This is 10 year old, uh, this 10 year old dog proved itself to be quite the escape artist, opening several doors on the way to breaking out of its temporary home while its family was on vacation. Yes, he roamed the halls for more than two hours before finding a door that led outside. And you should know uh, this great escape does have a happy ending. The dog is now safe at home with its owners. All those doors he opened. <laughs> well, as you've been seeing this evening, our Ryan is quite the Maple Leafs fan. Yes, and uh, there are fans like Ryan, of course, and then there are real fanatics. Let's go, Oilers! That's coming from Superfan Magoo. We love you! Woo! 
Oh, like this Edmonton fan who painted his SUV oilers orange to make it abundantly clear who he's cheering for. <laughs> yes, it's oh a, my it's gosh. Crude <laughs> uh, paint job. And he says it might not all wash off, but uh, look at it this way. He's all ready for the victory parade if the oilers go all the way. <laughs> and speaking of uh, cheering on your favorite team, let's go back to Ryan Snodden at the Biggs Restaurant and Sports Bar in St. John's. And Ryan, you really need to get a maple leaf suit like that guy was wearing. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I need to top that guy. And his van, he had the whole, he's got the whole deal. Uh, he's hardcore. I, I thought I was hardcore, but that guy, he is definitely the real meal deal. Of course, we still have Mr. Crow here uh, with us. Uh, Are you going to paint the Civic in Leafs colors if they make it out of the well, first Well, it is. Round? Yeah, I should. Yeah. I should, There's actually. There's a gentleman in Shea Heights who had the van going. That's right. I haven't seen ago. that van around yeah, this well, year. There was a point a few years ago where the Leafs were in danger. of. Oh, they did make the playoffs, and then they lost to Boston, didn't yeah. they? Right, sorry. Ah, uh, not supposed to bring that up. Uh, so listen, do you want to have a quick game? Sure, here? man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 W which team do you want to be? I'll be this team, the Habs. Okay, I'll yeah. be the Leafs. Okay. Uh, so uh, listen, I got to ask you, how long are you going to keep that beard going? Uh, till the Habs win the cup. <laughs> And, so, what, and what, what if they don't win so the cup? So it might be tied in a braid uh, by the time they win their 24th. Oh. If you grow that into a braided beard, <laughs> that would be the best thing ever. <laughs> yep. Just for, it's getting rave reviews in the Crow household, I have to say. Nice. This defenseman here, he his mobility reminds me of somebody that I know. we got to say goodnight, Crow. Thanks for joining good us. Night. Happy Thank Easter, everybody. Yeah. Good and luck, Leafs.